Grinders, you know how it is, your boy Poke Ringer. Big news, we finally did a cash out on Poker Stars. I have the stats written at the bottom, but we cashed out $2,500 from my original deposit of 200, leaving me a bankroll of $500. I'm already up $33 since I've started that. Um, we just passed 1,000 subscribers on the channel, man. I really can't thank you guys enough. It's been a long grind getting there, but I want to thank you guys. The new slogan is going to be called, when you're part of this team, what we're doing here, this community, I want to call it Under the Wing. I asked last video, here in the comments, we have Danny Danny suggested calling the new group Under the Wing. It's not official, but I, I like it a lot. It, to me, it rings... I just felt like when you guys join up, I wanted to say something, uh, you know, instead of the team or the squad. But anyways, you guys are under my wing. What does that mean? It means you're in good hands. I'm going to teach you guys how to make money. Quick little thing. Shout out to my friend here. Um, he started a channel. His name's George. He is a boxing trainer. He's also a personal trainer. This guy knows everything. It is crazy. Um, I, I know him. He's a great guy. Uh, he's got a new channel. If you guys are a fan of, of boxing, uh, and you want to learn some stuff. He's the guy to to start following. He's trying to do what I did a couple years ago He's just starting to get his social media going and uh, I know what it's like to get going. It's a slow grind So I want to wish him luck if you guys could support him uh, You know share it like it subscribe hook a brother up. He's a great guy um, And hopefully that works out for him So guys, let's get on the grind. This is what we're doing today today. We are gonna hunt for one million dollars I'm going to play the $5 limits today, um, see if we can get this bankroll going. I'm going to play probably two tables for this session. My son might come down in a second to show me his new pajamas. Dad life while we're grinding. I'm going to get two tables going. Um, so everyone wants to know my cash out. guys. I couldn't get a hold of poker stars for roughly a week, week and a half. Um, but I got a hold of them tonight through live chat. It was finally open. And second, I got a hold of them within uh, 20 minutes. It all got sorted out. Uh, one sec. Come show me your jammies. You want to come say hi? I'm doing a video. Hey guys. Oh, are we gonna call Pocket Fives Table One? Should I call it down here? Yeah. 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 All right, let's call. I like your jam jams. Thanks. Okay, I'm doing a video. Say goodnight. Night, guys. I like your jammies. They look cozy. Yeah. Dad, you fold. All right. Thank you, pal. Okay. Close the door, please. Okay. All right. Back to the grind and the updates. So, yeah, I was trying to cash out, as you guys know. I got declined. Um, originally they said they needed some new documents um, I don't really know why that happens I noticed some, some conspiracies I was up money and all this I have cashed out in the past I don't know if it's a new security thing nonetheless I was declined couldn't get a hold of them um, now realistically COVID's obviously happened right the, everyone's on lockdown so some companies are extremely understaffed Plus, they have more people than they usually have playing on their site. So I was trying to give them a bit of a benefit of doubt. And I'm not going to lie, I was stressed out because also a lot of the comments, man, you guys have made me, you know, you start to get pretty negative pretty quick when you start hearing people's stories. And, and I get it, man. When you're trying to get money, uh, I have goals. You guys know I was trying to pay for my, my roof. And uh, the quicker, you know, the longer takes me not to get my money that that, that project is delayed and I'm hoping it doesn't start leaking soon I just know I need new shingles and trying to fix that sooner than later um, but live chat was down for a week everyone kept telling me to try to use it and then today it finally opened up someone right away was extremely helpful they said they apologized they'll have someone review my emails and then within like literally 10 minutes, I got an email saying your your new stuff has been updated. All I sent them, I sent them an, an email with my license. And I sent them one bill of just a visa. Because um, I didn't even have personal, I think we're going to steal table one. I don't, I didn't even think, uh, sorry, I had no bills with my name on it. Except for like a visa. All my water bills, electrical bills, house bills are all, my, all in my wife's name. So... I didn't I didn't even really send them too much 
tried cashing out second they said it was approved and it seemed like it seems like it's gone through um, so I get them the email it says it will take three to five business days I'll keep you guys updated how long that takes um, for you Canadians if you want to know the exact stat I deposited 200 American which was 300 Canadian at the time with the currency as of the cash out it ended up being 3400 uh, I can tell you exactly anyways it's about $3,400 so I made more than 10 times my deposit plus I left myself more we started off with 200 American so I left myself 500 American and cashing out <clears throat> whatever you guys want to call it the 2500 Canadian or 3400 sorry 2500 American or 3400 Canadian that's the updates guys let's get back to grinding I haven't been paying attention to these first so I'm starting to bankroll at $500 I'm already up a little bit um, I'm gonna be doing a couple things in the near future for you guys I want to do a spin and go ladder series um, two different ones I want to do with that one one series it just takes a while but I was thinking of starting at the 25 cents and go try to run all, all 10 tables see if we can win 10 in a row and the other one is my favorite is starting at the five dollar area if you win a game you will move up and if you lose a game you move down i find that really fun um and then also some guys want me to do a video series on some lower stakes so you guys haven't seen me play the five dollars in a while so hopefully this makes some people happy um I'm not gonna play higher stakes and risk my bank oral until we build it back up and uh, I think we're just gonna steal table one here table one that board there when there's swapes and flushes and all this he's never gonna check back super strong things because he's gonna hope you have something so if he had Jack King he's gonna hope I have a lower straight if he had a flush, he's going to help have a straight. It's not a type of board they're going to check back like pairs too often and get like really uh, pot committed to it and stuff like that. So sometimes you can just, uh, against these, on average, they're not going to be too experienced players, you can get away with that. As you move up in stakes, instead of them just looking at their hands, they more consider why would a player do that, and then uh, they'll fight back. But at the lower stakes, they kind of just think oh my gosh I can't call nice we win table one this is borderline I'm definitely gonna call here but we're gonna be behind uh, often enough but with that flop we're just gonna run hot because we dropped down the stakes um, I still think man we're gonna get a big spin soon a lot of good things are happening so guys with the thousand subscribers what does that mean for me? That means my channel can start being monetized. Uh, I'm new to the YouTube game when it comes to something like that. How that works is you start a process. They review your channel. I've already started that. And I, they say they'll let you know shortly how that went. They said give it some time because of COVID. They're a little behind. Um, and then that means I can start getting ads. Will the ads be annoying to you guys? More than likely. But why am I doing that? A, to make money. But the biggest part is the money I'm going to get from YouTube because I'm such a small YouTuber, it's not going to be much money. And uh, my goal with the money I will get, and I'm assuming it might even take like six months to a year to get, I really don't know. But uh, I've been hearing some comments uh, in the comments in the videos. A lot of you guys are complaining about my quality of videos when it comes to audio um the webcam i just started get, getting going i could get a green screen uh set up. anyways i want to i want to give you guys better quality so i would first start on figuring out a mic situation um lighting and stuff like that um camera so um i haven't put money into youtube because i've never received any money to me it wasn't a business it's a side hustle and i wasn't going to put money into something unless the goal was never to make money right it was just to start a community and get better at poker so if the money does come in my very first plan is to set up the setup and then secondary this is like a bigger picture but i would love to be able to start like a free roll for you guys just for our little poker community here um even if you guys don't play poker but you've been wanting to you don't want to deposit your money 
Um, I'm waiting to maybe contact the site, see if we can start a free roll just for just for you guys. Um, and we can maybe get that going uh, down the road, but don't want to get your ho hopes up and it wouldn't be much money. Let's say I put $100 in there and we do a free roll ticket just for you guys uh, to play against me. Um, obviously, we can't do it in spin and goes because it doesn't work like that, but um, we'll see what happens down the road on that. But that is uh, one of my plans. After I start rambling on, maybe we'll play better poker here. Another video I'm going to do is someone suggested, I should write down all these names, but someone told me to do a video with my most common questions just so when people keep asking them I can name that video and then I don't have to answer them every day because the, the amount of questions I get daily from Instagram, Facebook Messenger and uh, YouTube comments about the same thing over and over again. and I know reality is those people don't know I get asked it every day and I feel rude when I don't respond to certain people and certain questions but um, I could definitely see it being like a, a tall task uh, depending on what all you got going on in, in your life. This is a strange board for me to fold there. Let's start playing some poker. We really haven't been watching what we're doing here. Another thing I want to do is uh, reach out pocket tens. We're obviously got eight big blinds. We're willing to get it all in here. That's a perfect scenario. We'll just call against both of them. Ah, perfect when you don't run into aces. All right. Lose that one. Um, I keep using kind of like music, just background music that's free on YouTube. Um, I want to be able to get my own like instrumental beats. Um, I have a couple of contacts for that that at one point said they were going to make me like an hour uh, hour video of my own beats so uh, then I don't have to keep worrying, worrying about this background music kind of stuff. I don't know how the big guys get away with like playing music with copyright issues like uh, the amount of videos I get that are flagged from background stuff like it's crazy and uh, they don't catch it right away like uh, I did videos two and a half years ago just using like background music and uh, I guess people who are new to the channel are going back to my old videos and uh, out of nowhere I'll, 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 I'll get a message saying a video has been copyrighted then I open it up and it's like from so long ago and it says like this song in this video uh, the company wants wants the if you get ads they want the revenue kind of thing. I'm new to the new the, how the YouTube really works. I, I really don't pay attention too much to it. All that fine print you're supposed to read, I just press OK and I hope for the best. Uh, the big chess everyone's word, uh, asked about too. I don't think I'll be unlocking another one of those because we've dropped down in stakes. My volume has been slowing down trying to worry about this cash out. And the funny thing guys, talk about not just negative but r realistically. I reached out to uh, Party Poker. I talked to them on Twitter, uh, the, the owner. He told me that his site I wouldn't have a problem cashing out on. Then I emailed their promotion team yesterday or the day before. And I tried flexing the small channel we got going here, saying, um, I have a channel. I have X amount of views, just past 1,000 subscribers. Um, if I was to leave poker stars, would you guys be able to give me any kind of promotion or a bonus? Um, they politely declined me, but but extremely fast service. They answered my emails um, like within the within the half hour or an hour, and they email, emailed me more than once, explaining stuff and asked me if I needed anything else and keep in touch. And I don't know, man. The fact that they answered my Twitter question right away um, and the big picture is they just signed Kevin Hart this week. Kevin Hart, the comedian, he has like 50 million uh, followers on all his platforms. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're not worried to get a guy who has a you know a thousand subscribers kind of thing. Like they're they're going for a different platform. But I figured, hey man, it was worth a try. Just if I can get a bonus for the sake of just joining somewhere, 
uh, I wanted to try to tackle that. The reason why I'm not on some of these other sites is that I don't like the formats of their spin and goes. Um, this is where I feel the most happiest. And the fact that I just got this cash out sorted out, I'm uh, assuming that's not going to be a problem in the near future. Um, and also for the rate, okay? What I got back last month, a lot of the comments were, look how much you could have made on party poker, which is 100% true. I definitely could have done more, but I'm not gonna be playing high stakes like that. I'm not gonna be doing that volume. So if I leave the party poker right now, and I'm playing micro stakes at a small volume, I'm leaving to a site that I don't like as much to get rake, but I'm gonna be getting like 20 bucks a week. Like if if I was grinding it out, like if it's if this comes winter time, and uh, then I have to really, then I might be switching sites just because I can really hammer off some bonuses. Um, that'd be like a, a plan. But when I'm doing a small small sample at, at low stakes, um, the money's so small that I don't know, I don't really know how much it's worth it. And uh, I still have a, you can't control this, but. I still don't like the uh, volume I played on Party Poker about two years ago. I've explained this more than once, but a lot of new people. I spent $109,000 on buy-ins. I'd say 80% of that was at the $20 limits, and then the rest was was under that. I never got above that. And in, in that many games, I never had a spin bigger than a 25x, and I only had about three 25x games. And uh, there was a little fishy stuff happening. It's hard to explain. It's a little, I haven't thought about it for too long, but they have a wheel that would stop at the money that it lands on. And I would have it on camera. It would stop on the jackpot and then it would be like a glitch. And I didn't know where I was playing for like a two X. And I emailed them and talked to them about it. And like, it, it just happened to me so often. Like it's probably just, just a fluke, but it was, you know, it was driving me up the wall that anytime it landed somewhere, it glitched out. So, some of you guys hate Pokestars, but the fact that I did cash out was a bad process, but i already gone through, hopefully, the, the, the rough of it. Um, I am aware I won't be getting much in rake back. Um, but... People told me go to party poker to be soccer games. Um, I don't believe that. Um, to me, if a site's playing really good rake, the two the people that really understand rake and care for that are good players, and uh, they're the ones who are going to be tackling that. So if party poker has an amazing rate back and they're going to be giving you big big money, the full time grinders are going to be. That's how they're going to go after that. I'm just going to ship it because he's going to have a lot of draws that have to call me here. We're going to be behind on table two sometimes. I'm not really doing this for fold equity. I'm doing it if he has like a straight draw, two flush draws. If he has one of those draws, so he has us. So if he had any one of those draws though, I'd rather him pay for it all in than for me just to sit there, check call, check call. Because if he had that ace jack there, if uh, one of those draws hit the river, if I check, he's checking back anyways. So to me, it makes more sense just to... He's not going to bluff too many rivers. So if I'm behind, I'm behind. But if he's chasing, I want him to, I want him to put it all in there. Well, I guess Queen A, we could probably get away with it over here. Sorry, a lot more rambling this video than other videos. And this is actually one thing to be real with you guys. Um, a thing I struggle with, which a lot of you guys probably struggle with, is when I drop down in stakes, like I just, you guys just saw me playing a huge volume at the $50 and uh, and, and the 25s. He's not gonna have too many king queens here, so I'm just gonna go for a min raise, probably a chop, but um, when you don't respect these stakes is what my story was just about, it's hard to take them as serious. The guys like, uh, like a Daniel Necrano, when they play these live, uh, tours in the summer for the World Series of Poker and one day they're playing he's playing like a you know $250,000 buy-in and the next day like a $200 tournament I don't know how you bring your A game to all platforms because like when I drop down in stakes 
I try to play solid, but it, I just um, there. I'm just gonna fold this. Um, I don't know. I just find I take a lot more flips in these lower games than I, I would at higher stakes. Um, which there is adjusting to what you're playing, but I wouldn't say it's my A game. But I, I also don't think you need your A game to uh, to win too consistent at these. Another thing I might do, I might reset my HUD to show you guys. Um, I do think I improved playing that last uh, six weeks of grinding. Uh, people seem to really care about EV and stuff. Uh, I, I really don't, to be honest. But uh, it seems to be spinning goal players tend to really want to know that question. But it changes so rapidly. And it changes on what stakes you're playing. For me, it would change also how many tables I'm playing. If I'm playing four tables for a month, it's going to bring down my EV. If I play two, it's going to go up. If I play lower stakes, it's going to go up. A lot of factors. So I might reset it to show you guys uh, like that, keep it above like 50, 70, stuff like that. Yeah, so do comment though, under the wing. What do you guys think about that? I like it. I think it's a pretty cool. <laughs> to be honest, it's one of those things you read it once and you're like, how the fuck did I not think of something like pretty much that exact same thing? Pocket three is all in table one. It's gonna ship pocket fives, table two. And we're ahead. Usually we're gonna be flipping, but we'll take the lead on that one. All right, what's the bankroll at? Are we doing? Ah, we're right around where we started with the game going. So now we're up. We're not getting any spins here, but still early. When did we start this video? Oh, we still got some grinding. Let's make an hour video for you guys. And uh, same with my videos. I get comments whenever I do a short one every time to make it longer. All my videos aren't going to be an hour. Um, some of them will be just one big spin, uh, some little updates. Um, I can maybe even do one savage one, but not. I don't know how many people really care to see like ridiculously long videos. But if I do a kind of like a ladder challenge and we're still like deep into it, um, I would obviously keep the video going to see how far we can get. So if you let it with a 10 here, that's a really bad car from, but we're gonna let it go now. Okay, I'm gonna get sneaky here, check back. Table one, these guys are gonna be more aggressive than they need to be. So I'm gonna let him kind of hang himself here. If he, sometimes he'll get bad beats, but he's gonna bet here, we'll get it all in. All right, let's go to Pure Valley Town. Pocket sevens. Nine five. These are, when I tell you guys to move down to stakes and play the fives, I definitely think I've said this over and over again, but wherever this yellow thing is, this million dollars, it will keep jumping. When it's at the low amounts, like 10 and under, you need to just rifle off these games. People play those 
just looking for that million dollars. It brings out Zoom players, tournament players. They have it going on the side while they're playing their normal game, and they do not take it serious. They're just hoping to get a. They're just hoping to get a big spin. You're almost better to get a 2x over a 3x because the 2x games they don't even care about. They're just going all in. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's free money, but um, soft games is a a great thing. Yeah, you will run into some good players, but in general, they're going to be pretty soft. And if you can, if you watch how I'm playing tonight, like I'm not doing anything fancy. We're not, we're not three betting. Really, we're just keeping it really basic. Um, to talk about the strategy of these lower stakes, um, I do think you should keep it basic. Um, adjust your opponents. But the big thing too is certain things they're not going to do that often. That when they do it, until they give you a reason not to believe them, you, you really got to give them more credit than the higher stakes. So the big example would be like the three betting. Lower stakes people, they don't three bet, they don't have a three bet bluff range. They just don't. So they're not going to three bet you with like uh, 10 jacks suited. They're, they're really going to three bet you with premium hands. Um, for the I'm generalizing it for the, for the most part. So that means, what does that mean? How do you adjust that? I mean, that means you overfold. So if I was to raise with like ace 10 and I get three bet at these lower stakes, like uh, I have no problem letting it go. At the higher stakes, I might click back and forth bet them. I might just jam them. I might slow down depending on, you know, history and all that. But at these lower stakes, like they're, they're just not three betting enough. Now, if you already play like 10 hands and you see them getting out of control, then for sure adjust to your opponent. Um, I would bluff a little less because they're going to be call happy. Um, I always get told you can't bluff the micro stakes. I, I don't agree with that. Um, you just have to be a bit more selective on the lines you're taking. I don't really take lines. Uh, I don't really try to represent something like I would at the higher stakes. You're more representing what you could have. At the lower stakes, my bluffs are more what they don't have. What can they call with? as opposed to what do I have. Just to give you a bit of how I view each stake. Okay, we're going to be good on table one. That's more of a, a rookie play, you'll get low stakes there. And like it doesn't mean it doesn't happen at the high stakes. It just means that uh, like you generalize it, right? There's still going to be some random newer players or so on messing around or every single player plays different. It's just going to be like, it's going to be lines that you don't see too often, right? All right, let's let's play one table just for a little bit. Don't mind keep rifling off too, but let's see. We're we're down. It's got more than double our, our stack here. Let's see if we can fight back. I'm more or less when I'm around ten big blinds. It's nothing crazy, and it's gonna be shoving a lot. This guy was more aggressive. I'd be limb trapping with my ace five, but he hasn't been aggressive enough. He's looking to see more free flops. So it's not the type of player I want to limb trap. If he was being aggressive, that ace five suited, I would have limped in, let him raise, and I would have jammed him. But he's just not aggressive enough for me to have to do that. If he raises, there's a good chance he's gonna be have me beat there.
Okay, here. His bat size, he could have an ace, but. Oh, he's betting. He's betting proper. He triple barrels here. Now, I did represent like I'm chasing a flush. Yeah. So, complete error. Nine doesn't do that. It's just if he bet the ace the whole time. And he hasn't been aggressive. I'm going to call. Queens. Good for you, sir. Okay, our bankroll's climbing, though, guys. We're up to 548. Still waiting for some 10x, 25x, some big spoons. Here we go, we got something. Another 3x machine. I've said this before, if we only ever got 3x's and never 2x's, just 3x's, no 5x's, anything like that, my bankroll would climb consistently. Your, it shows your, your win rate on poker tracker for each stake and stuff like that. I think I play at the fives, it'd be like 1.75 games. So a bit under every two games you win, it'd be like uh, just under every two. And then for most stakes, I'm around 190, 1.9. Uh, Ace queen here, we'll, we'll do it, flip it. There we go. I'm gonna flow with King High here. If he checks back, we're gonna try to steal this river. So he didn't check back, so I'm gonna actually just lay it down now. Especially his bet size too was very uh, a standard bet half pot. You'll find in the lower stakes they're more bluffy on the higher side when they bet high. If he would have bet maybe pot there. And then as you move up in stakes and get better, you start learning to make your betting patterns to be a lot of the same. So you bet the same when you have it or what you, when you don't, but the lower stakes, they don't tend to do that often enough. One thing I'm going to do better too is make more notes about things I want to address during the, the video. I always like after and the next day I'm like, fuck, I meant to say this, meant to say that. Sorry, this guy's playing pretty fast on table two here. King six, checked it all the way down for him to get that river. So this is not a board, I'm gonna scare him away. I'm gonna let him keep betting here. So I'm going to check even the river, and then he's going to bet. There he goes, and we got him. So bankroll's over 550 now. I haven't decided when the next cash out's going to be. Like I don't really have a, a price point yet. I got a couple, couple things I kind of on my mind of a radar what I want to buy for the family but for now I kind of want to build up a bankroll too because as much as it's uh don't mind playing the lower stakes um you also want to get paid for your time too right 
So if I want to put a hundred hours in a computer chair, I play like, you know, five dollar games without a big spin. Do, do I want to make like 500 bucks? Or if I feel like I can win at the 25s and stuff consistently. Um, I do think the 50s were very swingy. Um, I do think I'm a winning player there um, with the promotions they have on right now. If they didn't have promotions, I was explaining, I wouldn't have been playing the 50s. Um, but because of these daily challenges, it's just bringing out some very, very weak players. Uh, I don't know if they're keeping that on just during COVID. I haven't seen them ever keep a spin and go promotion on this long. So I'm a little curious about that. Um, but for now, like, it is the time to play for sure. I do work full time, but if, uh, for you guys who can play, um, this is the time to be grinding. Uh, I couldn't imagine when I first started to be in a position like this to do a bankroll challenge, put in 50 bucks, um, and work your way up to stakes. Like, uh, I used to find that so fun, man. You get to a new limit and just get so excited and you don't look at the money. You just look at like buy-ins. Like I used to grind like NL2 and like, you know, you win 12 buy-ins like money wise. Yeah. You make 24 bucks or something, right? And you're money wise it doesn't really mean too much but it's like holy fuck you're up 24 binds you're about to get to a new stake and you just create like this little challenge and for me it just made me want to keep grinding it out grinding it out and i find when i'm on a downswing i want to grind more um when you should do the opposite when you're on an upswing and playing good and you you want to ride that wave but i find i'm just so competitive if i'm losing um i find it really hard to arm plug and uh and to play proper too you start opening up more tables and you just you're trying to tackle money that you lost it is not the way to do it but um it's something that i've i've always uh kind of done just because other things in life you kind of grind through it right and uh poker is not not really like that like you should grind through it but you have to be doing it the right way and playing a huge volume uh is not usually the way if you're not you're not playing your a game I'm going to get another game going here because you guys want to see some action. This game's going to wrap up in a second unless I get a couple double ups. So for one second we'll run three tables. I should have looked at the time here when I want to end this. 37, 20 minutes. Yeah, so there's things I could do with the money, man, if I do get money from YouTube. Um, I've never edited my videos. I don't have an intro, uh, like set up. Like it, it's endless, right? Um, you could pay for someone to, you know, or I can just myself actually spend the time to organize your channel. Like uh, there's a there's a lot of things you can do. It's just having the time and and how much you want to invest into it. And for me to put money into it, if I wasn't getting money back, like uh, I didn't care enough to do it. All right, we're already heads up on the new table down here. I don't know what happened, but was that a different game? I think that was a different game. I don't know what I'm looking at, but somehow we're heads up. Seven six, I maybe fifteen big blinds. Uh, I don't mind the fold. So I think this chest here, even though I'm not going to unlock it by May twenty first, I think they give you. They give you some some bonuses for what you do have. The shitty part is I really wish I wasn't at a big chest because you guys saw I got $100 for this one promotion here, the snake and board ladder. And because I can't unlock any more dice, we can't play this uh, We can't play this game. You need to unlock a chest to, to play the rest of this. And uh, I've only got one chest because it was such a big chest and we got $100 from that. I would love to tackle all of these. Look at that top row, but um our chest is just like I, i'd have to do another uh eighty thousand or what it was fifty five thousand dollars in binds to to unlock that that's not gonna happen now i gotta set up my settings i don't know why this does this yes i want to keep listening oh what up shorty
You have one. I don't care if you do if you check back there or bet it. You're protecting your five a little bit, but you do already have some equity. You don't really need to bet. I just think of these lower stakes. Uh, you can kind of get away with a lot of different lines. Can we get there in table one? All right, we lose that one. Million dollar, one time. Fifteen dollars. Uh, Jack Queen suit here. Probably should have just went all in. So I didn't. I looked at my hand, not really my big blind. This is the type of shit out of position here. Uh, it's gonna go all in with the big blind, with only a couple left. He's gonna call it everything, kind of isolate him. Didn't work out for us, but not a bad play. For those who wonder if a HUD's needed, it is definitely not needed, but I'll tell you the one thing it does do for you. Um, it gives you some clarity on kind of how you're playing in the sense you think you're running bad and turns out you're not, um, or if you are in a huge downswing and that you see you're running bad, it lets you know that like, hey man, you're not a bad player. It's just poker, it's just variance. Uh, this is a hyper turbo game with a very little edge that downswings are gonna happen. So like, for me, it kind of just calms you down. Like, you don't hate yourself thinking you're the worst player um, or, or blame the world. You're just like, hey man, I'm running bad. Uh, times will pass. Got in the check back ace 10 there. Hey, yeah, I didn't want to go to value town or nothing, just checks back an ace. I like the respect. I don't know if I would have been clicking back there like he did. I don't think in a trip eights. Oh, six. Wow. Let's do this. How does he click back an ace there then? Calls the middle pair there. Okay, we lose another. I don't think we're winning table two when this guy's blocked our jacks here. All right, let's more or less end the video with running whole bunch of tables the camera and the writing might be in the way but let's end this thousand subscriber video cashing out video with a bang we got pocket jacks looks like we're all in on table two up there i'm gonna get a whole bunch of tables going here and we'll end with these little slow run of tables so i apologize if you can't see all of it Show you that people can play a high volume when they want to.
not going to be breaking down as many hands. Unfortunately, we get no big spins. To be honest, when I'm running six tables, it's not the time you want, like a 25x or something, because it's not even enough that you can't win the other ones. Like a big spin, you could just probably, uh, depending on the size of it. I don't know, can we steal table six down there? Me tanking here, I'm gonna jam him. See if we can get this guy to sweat it out. Ca caught a queen on the river and he called. Nice hand. Um, his bet size on table, whatever that is, five down there is why why I folded. If you would have bet a little harder, I think I would have called that. But they don't value bet enough at these stakes. done so far this whole bunch didn't work out for us but doesn't mean we're not gonna win these last couple two nine called this on the uh, turn bet there I don't recommend playing six games this was just to uh, end the video here. If you guys like the spin and go flash, I saw GG Poker's got a crazy promotion right now for that type of stuff. Um, I just don't like that that format, but I know a lot of people do. To me, it takes away. Uh, a lot of the edge we have playing uh, these type of people. The more big blinds you have, the more of an edge you're gonna have. Obviously, if you don't get dealt many chips, almost anyone can just kind of go all in and they're not really in a bad spot. If everyone has 10 big blinds, um, A, the aggressor will win a lot of the times, and then and you're, you really should be shoving uh, so many. King 10 suited. Oh, this guy's been tight. We'll let it go. So that's the advantage when you do have a HUD though, it lets you multi-table. Obviously if we weren't playing six, I wouldn't need to do a HUD to do that. But when you do play, uh, we got rivered with our aces down there. Let's see if our ladies can hold up for us. You know, I don't want to keep betting up there. Hopefully he bets this king, has a king. All right, he's not going to fold now. He's pot committed. That's more of a draw bet, but we'll definitely get it in there. I don't see him folding too often. We had the king jack, and we win at least that one to get some of those games back there. All right, if we close off these two, we will see the old bankroll. 
and we're going to wrap up the new bankroll. Starting with 500 now. Still, man, I'm pretty proud though. That was, uh, I didn't look at the exact dates, but from March 22nd, April 28th, so call that five weeks to 10x my buy-in or, or more because we left more than original. Uh, that's a that's a pretty uh, pretty solid uh, quick flip in money. I don't think this guy's raising enough, so I could probably just limp almost my full range. Queen, the 10 8 trap. Really? The 10 8, bro? That's the hand you're trapping with? Alright, let's get a win on table 2 there. Okay, we're getting some of it back from those 6 games we ran all at once. And yes, if you're running, have I ever started 6 tables and gone 6 for 6? Your boy's done that. And I've, I've done it, sometimes done it by accident though. I play at the low stakes and uh, that's a strange bet. Um, that's probably like two four, two pair, or four seven or something. Uh, anyways, and then you don't know you have five games open or four games and then you happen to move up in stakes that are nowhere you're playing a whole bunch at a limit you didn't think you're gonna play at. Is it me or did we run into a lot of pocket bears tonight? I felt like we, lot, we ran into a lot of over bears. Could try to limp them. Uh, I shouldn't have done that. Four, raise 4% four of the time. Shouldn't have done that, but. All right, we'll ship it now. Oh, and he flops the goods. All right, let's see what the bankroll is, guys. 533, I think that's what we started the video with. But I think we had some fun. You know what to do. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you hadn't. See you guys in the next video. Peace!